Hi there, I'm Abby and welcome to Abby's Den. I've got lots of work going on at the moment, so the room's a bit of a state. I'm making bunting for my son's music teacher and it's going to be done on the overlocker. So I've got my overlocker all primed and ready to go. I've made sure it's nice and clean. Everything is set to factory settings. So all tension dials are on four. The stitch length is on three and the differential feed is on one. I'm using this spotty fabric and this bird fabric on the front and on the back. I'm going to use the calico, just eight and a half inches. I think I just randomly cut them. There was no thinking about them. Fold it in the fabric in half lengthwise like this. Grab my cutting ruler and just long ways like that. So cut along from the opposite corner to the opposite corner. Okay. Okay, so I've got one, one, two, three, four layers there, and I'm going to do four in the bunting, in the birds. Lay that on there. And because the birds go a certain way, I've got to make sure, oh, they don't, they're always. So if I put it right on the corner there, what you'll find is you'll get two triangles going that way. So I'm going to, there we go. And then across there, the top. That's if you want extra pieces. Can you see? I've got two pieces there now. Oops. So I've got two extra pieces there. And I've got one, two, three, four with birds on. So I'll give them a press. Right, so we'll cut some triangles out in the spotty fabric. So grab my template. So let's cut some out in this fabric. I'm going to put it right up in the corner. So that's where I've got folds. And if you don't have a rotary cutter, just grab something to mark it with. Like that. There we go. And then just use a pair of scissors to cut it out. The nine triangles in the plane, five in the birds, and five in the four in the spots. I'm going to sew them together now and make my bunting. So pin the good sides of the bunting together. So there we go, like so. Make sure the pins are well out of the way so when I surge, I'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to serge all the sides along here, all in one go. When I get to the end, I'm going to grab the next two pieces. And if you want to, you can set them all ready. You can set them all ready with the pins in there. I'm not going to use pins, I'm just going to go for it. When I've gotten to the end, grab the next piece of fabric. And the last one. Okay, 
so I've got all the bunting but I've got the other sides to do as well now so now that I've done that side make sure you know which is the top and I'm going to crack on with the other side so that's that one Okay, so I'm going to separate all pieces, uh, bunting pieces. Right. So you need to get rid of the long threads because they might show through. If you hang this up in the daylight, um, all the inside will show through you. So you do want nice, neat stitches. So again, just push from the edge, not po we're not poking, we're sliding along the edges, okay, so slide, slide, and you get much better corners that way, okay, but you're never going to get a perfect corner on an overlocker because of the, squ the square seam, so get that done. Pressed, so the corner, the edge, the corner is pressed. So I'm sliding the wood along as I press, and that's why a small iron like this is really handy. For when you're doing cuffs and collars and you know fancy finishes. You want to be able to finish it off well. There we go. There we are. So we'll add our pieces to the bunting strip. So allow about 30 centimetres or maybe a little bit more. Depends on where you know you're going to tie this. I'm going to put this good sides together against the top. And I'm going to pop a pin right on the edge there. Next one touches the tip. So tip to tip, like that. So they're touching there. And I can just see the bunting tape through there. And then carry on and do the rest. If you don't want to use pins, use clips. Just remember to take them out before you get to the foot and just keep going. Okay, so if you want to feel, can you see how one pin moves it around? You might find that, like the pegs, you might find it easier to use two pins. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pile these up in sort of a concertina, so like this, and so they don't get muddled like this and then back oops one's totally turned round over and then that one's twisted let's undo that one again so it's not twisted that one goes like that one goes underneath and that one goes like that okay and there's the extra tape that I have 
I'm going to stitch it into the machine and I'll start with the needles down into the fabric there. So I'll start with the needles down in the fabric there and press the foot down and then start going on from there. Okay, so here's the pile of bunting flags with the tape. So I should be able to just lift them off the table like that and they'll surge and go to the back of the machine. So needles out, press the foot up and let's place this in the machine there. Starting with the needles in the fabric. So almost to the end. And I'm going to finish with the needles finishing on this bunting fabric. And that's, I can see in there, that's the end of the triangle. Lift up the presser foot and I'm going to chain off. And let's go and press the bunting. Okay, so here we are. There it is, stitched and edged. Find the first one. I'm going to, I'm not going to cut this thread. I'm actually going to feed it through. So I need to get my tapestry needle. So use the head, not the pointy side and feed it through the loops about an inch away and then feed this through the eye so you need some a needle with a big eye to do this let's push those threads through the eye catch them when you've caught the thread through the eye, you can pull the needle back through the loops like that. You might find you might need to coax the loops out. So decide which side is the one that's the loose end and then just pull. There we go. Pull that through. Pull it a little bit more again, trim right at the end, and then release. And then those ends are now tucked away and hidden inside there. Do the same on the other side. So just go through each one. And if you have a clapper, even better, leave the steam on there. And the clapper will help catch the warmth and the moisture and help cool it down quicker. And then it helps hold those creases in. 